Back on board Pacific Sea Craft Orion 27 and the continuing project of hooking up my batteries which used to be in the lazarette locker over there and now they're all located underneath the cockpit. So in this video I'll be sharing with you what was and what I've built. Originally there were two house batteries on this side in the lazarette and uh, they were stored above a fuel tank which is below this tray that houses the water heater and uh, then some space for storage and water uh, fresh water coolant uh, assembly which I haven't finished plumbing yet but if you think storing two lead acid batteries along with a propane tank on top of a fuel tank was a bad idea you had no say in the building of this boat back in 1979 Here's my redesign of this system. All my batteries are now housed under the cockpit floor in a fiberglass reinforced plywood box. They sit behind the engine. It's not a cool place when the engine's running, but it's the most space I've found for storing batteries on this boat. The optimum start battery, the red top, is located behind the house batteries and the typical plastic battery box, and that's strapped down. The three quarter inch plywood platform, the original start battery, the old charger we're in, built and rest on to the sides of the hull shape that you can see here, a V-shaped hull shape. And uh, that formed a limitation for how high of a box I could build. The house battery box is made out of half inch plywood uh, screwed together and then layered with uh, two or three, depending upon where, uh, corners, for instance, three layers of fiberglass and coated uh, polyester resin. And, uh, and then finally gel coated. I built in air vents uh, to help facilitate airflow into the battery box when the lid's on. There's a gap here of about an inch between batteries and then I have drain plugs uh, for each bay. The, the partitions here are about half the height of the battery box, somewhere around here. And the reason why is because I have to tip the starboard or port side or starboard or port side batteries uh, into place. There's not enough vertical room here to uh, just drop the batteries in vertically. And then the battery box is bolted down by six, uh, seven sixteenths inch uh, stainless bolts, and um, and the box is elevated here by one inch of uh, HDPD under each battery bay, and that again space is needed because of this uh, <coughs> uh, plywood platform not having sufficient lateral space for the width of this battery box. The nylon bolts or plugs on each in case here uh, allow drainage of the battery bay in case there is a flood or water somehow gets in there. But the um, process was to build or drill a larger than uh, the diameter of this bolt um, hole and then fill it with thickened epoxy, then come back and drill in that thickened epoxy once it's hardened, and then tap um, threads so that these uh, nylon bolts have something to bite into. Although perhaps best practices would have you put fuses for each battery right at the battery post. Um, in my case, there was not quite enough clearance here to do that. Again, I'm limited by the height of my compartment here, and uh, that battery box is uh, therefore not, and there's not enough uh, space, headspace to put fuses on top of the batteries. So, uh, the closest place I could have fuses or breakers is at, uh, right next to the battery box. So, I have uh, roughly 18 inches of wire. Uh, over here to this battery box, uh, fuse box, breaker box, I guess you call it. So I have my 
Uh, top one's my starter battery, and then I have battery one, two, and three down here. And battery, house batteries one, two, and three are um, wired together um, with a plate, a uh, copper plate, and then the wiring continues on back to the cabin where there's a, a two position battery switch, conventional big red one that you usually see. Uh, wires go up and over the fuel filter and back into the cabin. And these are uh, young, um, easy to break uh, or set breakers here. I got a 70 amp for my uh, starter battery and uh, that's getting close to the limit of recommendation where you go from uh, fuses to breakers. But anyway, uh, it's working fine for me here. And then I have 50 amp for each one of the house batteries. I can turn each one of those on or off. And um, my charging systems on the other side of the engine compartment. I have a Pro Mariner just for the start battery. And then I have this larger one down here that's for the three house batteries. And the reason why I went that way is because if something happens to a charger, I do have some sort of a backup to uh, at least charge batteries until I could get my battery charger replaced. The negative side of the batteries are tied together with this uh, uh, four gauge wire here, this big thick one, <clears throat> and there is a, a six gauge one back there for the optimum battery, and they follow the line down here and are tied together on a plate. The plate is down here on the starboard side um, on a bar that connects the engine mounts, and um, all the negative terminals are terminated here even from the house panel. That is stainless 316. Uh, not the greatest conductor but for one inch piece of metal it's not a big deal. As I mentioned previously each battery under each battery are two 716 stainless bolts that hold the battery box down onto the three quarter inch platform. And I was concerned that if there's a cap size, whether that is enough, that three quarter inch plywood down there uh, has enough um, strength to uh, hold, uh, what's this, 180 pounds of batteries down. Um, it might, but just to fortify that a bit, um, I built a, a lid. Now that's the back L bar. The forward L bar um, has this um, spacer because the cockpit floor on this side over here is a bit closer to the box. It's sloped and that makes sense so that the water runs out the stern here and um, it, compared to the forward side. So I have to build it. I had to build a spacer to take up the difference. And then to hold the bars in place, I have this bungee system, which uh, basically I have two eyes on either side uh, screwed into the wood below. And that's what I have for easy access to remove this panel. I finished off the battery box, but uh, wiring for that and the water heater led me to uh, other electrical upgrades and that'll be on the next video I'm updating my AC and DC panels here from the original um, panels that were on this Orion 1979 also uh, redoing wiring over to the AC outlets that'll be on the next video till then we'll see you next time